Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Wednesday, middle of the week. And I wanted to start with the upper air because I want you to, you to kind of visualize, you know, what happens to the uh, jet stream as we move deeper and deeper into the spring months. What, what winds up happening is that the polar jet is going to retreat northward. And, and, you know, this is where we are at the moment. We've got this very deep trough here, relatively deep trough here in the east. So we've got a, a, a flow coming straight out of northern Canada, which explains the very cold temperatures that we're experiencing here today and tomorrow. We have a trough just off the west coast, a ridge up the Rockies, and we also have a ridge out in the Atlantic up toward Greenland. So you can see how the flow just kind of locks itself up uh, cold from Canada, uh, drives down into the northeastern part of the United States. Energy continues to come in off the Pacific and into the western part of the United States. That bark you hear, by the way, is my dog uh, because I've got chicken in the oven. So he, he can't see or, or hear. He's 13 years old, and uh, but he uh, can smell food. So he may be barking through this whole video. Um, anyway, as we move through, you can see that trough, how it lifts up. But gradually, as we go deeper and we start to go into early april you see how the the flow from the polar regions relaxes that is something that you're going to see for uh the next six weeks or so you're going to get these occasional periods where it does strengthen and here's one you know as we move into early april uh, where we've got some semblance of a polar flow and still a very active pacific jet um, but these troughs here in the eastern part of the United States that have polar connections uh, start breaking down um, and la and the breakdowns last longer and longer. Uh, they uh, start to come together less and less as we move uh, through the month. However, w the other uh, issue when this happens is that you still have this very active cold Pacific flow, relatively cold anyway, and you see how these upper upper air storms kind of move along. Something like this uh, this is a, a cold feature in the upper layers of the atmosphere, and it's moving across an area in the southern part of the United States where the sun is very strong and the atmosphere is heating very rapidly uh, as we move deeper into, into March and April. The outcome of this is that you wind up with uh, severe weather threats, and I think we're going to start seeing a lot of those going forward across much of the United States. So let's uh, look now at the short range because we know that it's cold here in the east and there's the high i'm just going to back it up on the we'll start with the nam model because i have the new version of it and you know the high comes right overhead the core of the cold air tonight and then starts to move, move out tomorrow morning and then we're going to start to see temperatures moderate now there's a warm front that sets up here right there okay and ahead of that warm front is some a little bit of rain and even some sleep or pro probably even a, a touch of freezing rain it isn't very much uh, much of that precip is light and who knows how much of that is going to survive in the meantime this is going to be a round of severe weather here uh, with a, a storm all on the oklahoma panhandle and uh, here's your warm sector right in there okay so the uh, nam does produce a, a line of showers and thunderstorms from east texas on up through eastern oklahoma and eastern kansas this is uh, midday Friday and you can see how that line strengthens as it moves eastward so there's going to be severe weather here in East Texas and then gradually moving into Arkansas and Missouri come Friday in the meantime that warm front moves on through and heads up to the northeast so here comes the warm air that uh, we are waiting for here in the uh, New York New Jersey Eastern Pennsylvania uh, down to Maryland and Delaware. So I think we're going to see temperatures uh, start to rise on Friday. And then the big question for Saturday is a backdoor cold front. And if they're, it, it's, it's right about here. And the new NAM wants to keep that front to the north of the area on Saturday. So if that is the case, then we should see a run of temperatures uh, climbing up at least into the 60s with a west wind and that's important this time of year because if you have any kind of ocean component to the wind you're going to wind up cooling temperatures down and keeping them in the 50s and even the 40s in some places so the the new nam which takes us out to saturday evening would suggest 
that the backdoor front won't come through until late in the afternoon, so that should be enough for warm-up. In the meantime, there's more possible severe weather uh, breaking out Saturday, this time uh, in parts of western Kentucky, down into uh, west central Tennessee, northern Alabama, and northern Mississippi. And that's with this next low that's riding on eastward into the Ohio Valley. So, uh, you know, this is definitely a busy, busy time uh, when it comes to um, severe weather. So I will now we'll go over to the last run of the GFS model and we'll look at the surface and see what's going on here. And there we go. Okay, so that's back over at day 10. And so here we are, you know, here's that high, pulls out. You know, the GFS brings that warm front through. You can see there's a little more shower activity up through New England, some snow up in northern New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine. There's your low in the southern plains. So here's your severe weather threat uh, for Friday as it blows up uh, late Friday afternoon into Friday night. Then that low pushes east. Now here's where, you know, we look at the GFS. There's this cold high that's building down from Canada. So the backdoor front is just about through. The models are a little further north with that backdoor front. And this is going to make a huge difference because I have to forecast, you know, basically for that box. So um, I could be sitting in the 40s and 50s on the north side of the front and be every bit of 60s and 70s to the south side. And, and trying to figure out where that middle ground is, where that line is, is going to be really, really tough. Okay, so now once that back door goes through that marine flow set settles up and you have low pressure that runs up uh, into eastern michigan this is that southern plain system and it weakens as it moves northeastward but there's some rain with that and that goes into western new york there's probably going to going to be uh, a little wave that's going to develop uh, somewhere near uh, southern new jersey or just east of uh, of, of long island as the as the uh, gfs shows it and then that rain goes by, and then there's yet another system right behind it that is going to swing east. And that runs up into uh, northeast Ohio, northwest Pennsylvania, and likely redevelops right in our backyard uh, with that low that you see here off the New Jersey coast. So now we're into Wednesday of next week. And by the way, in case I, I forget, the date of the map is always up here. Okay? You can always look up here. And the time is in Greenwich Mean Time. So you have to add um, you, you, 18Z is uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, it's a five-hour difference. Uh, so uh, midnight Greenwich time is 8 o'clock. I'm, I'm sorry, it's four hours now because we're on daylight time. So 18Z is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, when it hits midnight Greenwich time, so midnight Thursday is 8 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, so and then subtract accordingly as you go through the to the time zones in the West. So this low for uh, now we're at March 29th uh, does produce some substantial snows up in upstate New York, northeastern New York, and up through Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and even into parts of Massachusetts. So we'll see how that plays when we get closer. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we have more and more systems coming into the West that produce uh, severe weather threats from time to time over the next two weeks. And in fact, toward the uh, day 11, which is now April 2nd, uh, the GFS last night makes some sort of humongous gale center that wants to bring up the East Coast, just in up the Appalachians into a huge rain, rain and windstorm here. Who knows if that's real or not, but we'll see. And uh, the West continues to be very active uh, with, with system after system coming in. I'm just going to back it up uh, as we uh, move through the rest of this week. Um, there's one system coming in. Here's one for Friday coming into California in the west. Another one comes in on Monday into the Pacific Northwest. And each one of those moves along and does something in the eastern part of the United States. You know, that's a big change from what we saw, by the way, coming out of last winter uh, and also through a good chunk of the spring last year, because uh, which set up the near drought conditions uh, in the eastern part of the United States. These weather systems had a real tough time coming eastward, and when they did, they seemed to fall apart. So we really didn't get much rain out of them. Uh, this time around this year, I think because we don't have the El Nino, uh, we uh, might see uh, 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 better activity. When I say better activity, I mean more productive activity in terms of rainfall, because 
uh, you know, we do have, we still have this rainfall deficit that we've been keeping even with, so it hasn't gotten any worse. And the snowpack has been very beneficial. So the snow melt into a lot of the um, rivers and lakes into the up into into the northeast uh, are going to uh, come up back close to uh, normal. Maybe not all the way, but they are going to get a substantial uh, rise in levels uh, because of the kind of winter we've had. The snowfall, especially uh, to the north and northeast, was uh, well above normal. Uh, uh, north and northeast of the coast was well above normal. Uh, from uh, New York City, from Route 78 <clears throat> through Central, uh, draw a line across Pennsylvania and cut the state in half from there. North and east, it was uh, an above average snowfall winter. So that is going to go uh, a long way in alleviating the drought. Snowpack is so important uh, to recharge rivers, <clears throat> lakes, streams. And, you know, this is important for water sources, important for fishermen, important for outdoors people. You know, you want to have all those things working correctly. And you have to rely on nature to do its job. So the spring pattern we're setting up looks very active going forward. Um, I, you know, we'll, we'll see if that means that there might be one more snow surprise for somebody. Uh, right now, I'm, I think I'm a little more focused on uh, the changes that are going to be going through from day to day. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see if models uh, try to show anything in the longer term uh, with regards to um, blocking and whether there'll be one more um, snow threat. I tend to lean against it um, because setups for this particular area anyway, I would lean against it if only because setups need to be perfect. I'm not saying that it's it's impossible, uh, but right now I'm not overly in, excited about anything I'm looking at, uh, but it is a stormy pattern, so you always have to be a bit careful. Okay, posts on website, meteorologistjoechoffee.com, angry Ben. You know, Angry Ben has a tough time smoking his cigars when it's really windy here in the east, and that's what we have. Uh, very strong winds uh, and wind advisories up. Uh, just, just We've had gusts up into the 40s uh, in many locations uh, over Long Island and around the New York City area, north and east into the Hudson Valley and into uh, Connecticut and much of southern New England. So we'll have wind, wind advisories running through the day. So we'll check out Angry Ben's post about that and his idea on the back door front for the weekend on nycweathernow.com and uh, thank you for being here on my YouTube channel uh, if you're a regular subscriber thank you very much for coming here on an almost daily basis uh, you're a very loyal group and I really appreciate that and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel just hit the subscribe button it's absolutely free it doesn't cost you a dime you get notified when new videos come up and uh, you can keep lockstep with the weather going on not just here in the Northeast and around the New York City Philadelphia area but also as around the country. And sometimes we look at Canada and other places. And soon enough, it'll be hurricane season, so we'll be focused on that as well. So everybody have a great day.